money out of their pockets because they can't control their own spending. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Speaker, that was audition number one. <laughs> out of ten, one. one. <laughs> the next will be worst, of course. And this speech is for the National Party's back bench because their front bench is moribund, defunct. They are not going to last if they want to be in anywhere have shape in the 2020 election. Can I just say, this has been a most blistering week. <laughs> it's been very hard to focus on one's work. <laughs> or to get one's colleagues focused on one's work because the moment we're trying to be positive and get on with running the country, we are sidetracked by constant media questions as to what do they think it all means. And what it really means is donuts for national. <laughs> That's what it really means. Here's the point, though, you know. Yesterday, you saw the National Party about to invoke the Electoral Integrity Act. <laughs> about to invoke the Electoral Integrity Act. Just three weeks ago, who said this? It's an affront to New Zealand's core values of freedom of speech, of respect for democracy, and of tolerance of dissent. A blunt tool to nail dissenters, unquotes. Guess who said that? No, the master of Kant, duplicity and double talk, Nick Smith. And then, three weeks ago, David Carter. This is what David Carter said in sharing his conscience with the country. He said, quotes, he wouldn't want to stay in the National Party if my conscience was curtailed. <laughs> and he went further. And it's a sad day for democracy. Chris Bishop, never to be left out, of course, said it was anti-democratic. And then Mr Brownlee, who's so pleased that his contest for the job is gone, said it was a travesty. And yet, yesterday, yesterday... Order, order. <laughs> <laughs> and if it wasn't so funny, so would you be. <laughs> yeah, we know you're going. In fact, you're gone. And you have been for a long time. Can I just say, as the good book says by their deeds, you will know them. And so yesterday, someone challenged the veracity of the leader of the National Party, and he said things far, far worse, and they'll be on those tapes, and instead of saying, let's find out what the evidence is, no, they rushed to yet dispel someone who's asking legitimate questions about whether the law's been broken, and much, much more. And then, of course, Paula Bennett decided to get down into the trench with trolls and started being personal and family allegations and I would have thought with the great respect to her she's the last person to make those allegations. Make no bones about it. She would be the last person to make allegations like that. But I don't want to get personal. Can I just say that Simon Bridges is a goner. His number one achievement has been to become New Zealand's number one blame thrower. He blames everybody but himself. He went out and faced the country with all that money, and the further they went, that he went, the more we loved it, because the more they saw and perceived what he was like. In fact, his negativity polling was 16, just about three weeks ago, and now I'm told by their internal polling, it's past 25. That's irrecoverable territory. But here's the point. You can't trust what this man says. He said on the 40th of August to what I might call RNZ's reporter B, he said this, that he might never get to the bottom of who leaked the information before it was due to be published, but it was not in his caucus, end of quotes. Not in his caucus. And then the other characteristic about this uh, brilliant leader is he can't go anywhere without a support crowd. Now, we all know the features of leadership are grit, self-belief, and determination. A lot of my colleagues have got it on the side of the house. A lot of my colleagues have got it on the house, say Vincent. But no, not this man. He can't go anywhere without a morale support crowd. Excepting, excepting via this bunch behind me, 
I'd have a mirror in front of me <laughs> to make sure I can see over my shoulders. Now, would you feel assured by the crusher behind you? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. But here comes the point. They're all going to take over in a contest to be the next leader, and not one of them rates more than 2%. Uh -oh. The Honourable Judith Collins. Order. Order. Isn't it lovely of them? They always cheer.